Welcome to Thriver TV, the place to break free from narcissistic abuse with quantum tools and understandings. Are you sick of having people in your life suck the life force out of you? Is this something that's been a struggle for you? It certainly was for me. Do you want to keep struggling with this and the fear of energy vampires or do you want to find a way out of this nightmare? I promise you there is a way to take your life force back. Keep watching and I'll show you because I'm going to tell you both what is really going on when an energy vampire hooks in and how you can shape up, get away, stay away and be impervious to them. All right, so before we get started, thank you everyone who subscribed to my channel and for supporting the Thriver mission. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I want to remind you to please do. And if you like this video, please make sure that you hit the like button. All right, let's get into it. So I want you to stop looking out for them. And you may think that I'm really mad saying this, but I promise you I'm not, even though once upon a time, I would have thought so too. Defense is wrong town with energy vampires. It actually makes you more susceptible to them and it's easier for them to infiltrate you and start feeding from your energy. Offense really is the best way to beat them. And I know that you may have been learning everything you can about energy vampires to try to defeat them, but I'm going to tell you in the nicest possible way I can. Stop doing that. Why? Because when you do that, you leave your territory to go searching out there for someone who could be your threat. Meanwhile, you've left yourself totally alone in there. And it is in there where you're susceptible to infiltration, damage and theft. There are not only gaps, you are now completely unattended and exposed. I want you to imagine this. Imagine your house. Imagine if it had broken doors and windows and you started roaming the streets looking for people who might try to rob your house. Just wouldn't it be much better to fix your doors and your windows? Wouldn't it be much better to be in there doing the inner work to shore up your gaps and develop yourself to be impervious to energy vampires in the first place? You bet it would. In fact, it's the only way that you will ever be safe. To neglect your own self-discovery, your inner work and your development whilst you learn everything you can about psychic vampires to protect yourself is a total waste of time. Psychic vampires don't put their hands up and announce their arrival. Hello, I'm a psychic vampire about to desecrate your life. Rather, they scrutinize you to find out what gaps you have in there. They then infiltrate and act out what you want to see and hear all the while taking full advantage of what they find. And they do it with such masterful precision that you don't see the warning signs until it's too late. And I, I know this may disturb you, but it shouldn't, not at all. It should empower you. So now let me explain how psychic narcissists do infiltrate and then how they simply can't. So how does a psychic vampire get their hooks in? I want to use this example. Cindy meets Joel. Joel is a psychic vampire on the hunt for a new target, someone who he can enmesh with, get narcissistic supply from, self-medicate with and suck dry. Cindy doesn't trust people and because of this, she's unknowingly on the lookout for narcissists and knowingly, she also does a lot of research about them. So Joel shows up being how he is with most people when he meets them. He's charming. He's skilled. He knows exactly how to test out new sources to see if they can be hooked and how he can do it. Joel works out pretty quickly that Cindy is distrustful of men and he asks some empathetic questions about her life and he feigns total consideration and care. And because Cindy has felt so hurt in the past and she's never healed this hurt within herself, a 
Of course, she wants someone in her life who is genuine, caring and real. And with love so drastically missing in her life, Cindy is craving it. Him being, in inverted commas, gentle, caring and kind is as appealing to her as an oasis is to a parched woman in the desert. So Cindy gravitates to Joel. She opens up and she tells him what has happened with men in the past. Bingo! Joel has all the information he needs and he expresses a story where he went through the same and explains how he just can't believe people would behave like that and how he would never do that himself. And the crazy thing is Cindy thought she'd learned everything she could about energy vampires. She believed that she could pick a narcissist at a hundred paces. Ah, Tiggy's hair. <laughs> But the narcissist picked her, picked her off actually, and did it so easily, it was crazy. How could he do that? This is how. Cindy was unhealed from her previous narcissistic experiences. She had not gone in there to do the work to be shored up and impervious. She hadn't fixed her doors and windows. Cindy was still carrying the following beliefs. People who love me hurt me. I can't trust the people I love. I'm not able to be safe with love partners. Now please understand, logic has got nothing to do with these inner unhealed traumas. Get this, before her date with Joel, Cindy was on the phone to her girlfriend Katie telling her how she knew she would never fall for a narcissist again. She'd watched every YouTube on it. She'd read every article and all the experts had told her what to look out for. But, and it's a huge but, her painful inner belief systems that hadn't yet been healed up meant that Cindy could only connect with the literal match to them. That's what happens. Our belief systems play out to the letter, no matter what we learn or research. It's inevitable. It's quantum law. So within, so without. I did it. You did it. We all did it. And many of us are massively intelligent, learned and researched. So it all gets back to in there. That's where we need to change. Okay, so with Cindy, where were the red flags with Joel? There weren't any. Of course, Cindy didn't see the narcissistic warning signs such as number one, an overinflated ego. Number two, making it all about himself. Number three, being triggered about ridiculous things that most people don't get upset about. Number four, being controlling, exploitative, unreasonable, refusing to take responsibility for his behavior and so on and so forth. Of course she didn't see these things because he hid them. Within two days of meeting Joel, Cindy completely believing she had met her dream man is in his bed. Within two more weeks, he's moved in just the way a narcissist likes it. Quickly securing supply as the payoff for their efforts. And he had expertly maneuvered all of this so that it wasn't even his idea. He crafted this by feigning being happy to wait for sex for as long as it took. He would give her time to trust him, blah, 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 blah. And convinced that he was decent, respectful and trustworthy without ever getting to know him or waiting to sue, see who he really was. Cindy flung open her door, bed, body and heart to him. She did that herself. And of course the results were terrible for Cindy. Within six months, Cindy had complex post-traumatic stress disorder, fibromyalgia, and she'd lost half her savings to him. A year later, she was too sick to hold down her job and she was fighting to try to save her home. Why didn't Cindy leave back then when his mask had dropped and she started to see more than the warning signs the actual abuse which was irrational selfishness refusing to take responsibility and his horrible knee-jerk reactions because she had gaps 
that he had well and surely hooked into and exploited, which meant she kept clinging on, trying to make him going to go back to being beautiful Joel. After all, he had become, she positioned him as the savior of her soul, which she was not being for herself. And this is the most powerful energy tie that we can ever have with an energy vampire. It's the exact reason that they can remain around, dig in and suck because they've become the savior of what we haven't healed. Now, let me show you what being impervious to a psychic vampire looks like. Let's look at how to defeat a psychic vampire. So here is another example. Joel, having discarded Cindy in the gutter after he had broken her completely and he'd run off with all that she previously had, he re-emerges and he's on the sniff again. He meets a woman at a cafe. Let's just call her Jean. Jean used to be a true food source to narcissists. She used to be codependent, clingy, unhealed, and carrying a ton of beliefs that made her a match for abusers. Beliefs like, I can't survive without a man. Other people are much more powerful and know more than me. And if I don't comply, I'm gonna get smashed, as well as a bunch of others and with big, bad abandonment terrors thrown in as well. Gosh, that sounds like me. So, so many of us. In the past, as a result of nearly dying, she got to work on herself, big time. In fact, she worked diligently on herself every day for months because there was no way she was gonna go through it again. Okay, so here she is at, at a cafe, innocently working on her laptop, when a charming, good-looking man sits down next to her. Hi, he says, and she replies with, how are you going? Joel flashes a killer smile and asks Jean what she's writing. She tells him that she's writing stuff to help people recover from abusive relationships. Joel asks her if this is about personal development. Jean smiles back and says yes. With some more chit chat, Joel asks Jean if she had herself been abused and this is why she does this work. Jean says yes. And he says, you poor thing, that must have been horrible. Jean says, it was amazing. I'm so happy that it happened for me because my life is so much better now because of it. Joel looks at her like she has two heads and he starts doing a double take trying to work out where her gap is so that he can appear to be the savior of a wound that she may have. And it's obvious he's rattled because he doesn't know what to do. Jean is now observing him thinking, how hilarious, this guy is a narc. He can't find her gap. So he starts telling her how he loves personal development Jean is having a lot of fun with him now, asking him questions about the teachers and books he professes to know because it's plain to see he's full of BS. Both Joel and Jean know he is now sounding like an idiot. He looks at his watch and he tells Jean that he's running late and he leaves. Jean is nearly crying with laughter on the inside. And the entire time during their exchange and when he first came up, she couldn't have cared less if he was decent, a narcissist or an alien because she was simply being herself. Okay, so maybe this is my story. A guy on YouTube last week, it was so funny because I actually quoted somebody else saying, Melanie, he said, oh my God, you're using your name in the third person, you're a narcissist. So, you know, I don't do that. <laughs> But this is an example of my story, but I know other thrivers that are this good at this as well. I promise you, I have had that happen. Okay, so let's have a look at the moral to this story. Please don't think I'm better than anybody else here because I purportedly know how to pick energy vampires. I'm not any better. The only reason I am not concerned ever about people being narcissists or not is because I know that no energy vampire false self can infiltrate if I'm being my true self. What is a true self? 
A true self is someone who is fully committed to releasing themselves from inner trauma to be who they really are. When you do this, you will be whole and full on the inside. You won't need anybody to give you yourself. There will be zero compulsion to take emotional risks. You will realize that when you're healed up on the inside and you're no longer driven from your emotional wounds, which is akin to being a broken inner child seeking a parent to fix you without knowing it. That's what I used to be too. When you heal that stuff, you're going to start making really healthy choices, including speaking up when something feels off, asking difficult questions and setting boundaries if necessary. You will firmly know that you are totally prepared to lose people in your life rather than lose yourself again. And you may not pick a narcissist immediately, like I did in this example, but who cares whether you pick a narcissist or not? I don't care whether a narcissist shows their true colors immediately or even down the track. And neither will you after doing the real inner work. Because if you are fully you, regardless of what other people are or aren't doing, then how could you not be true to you? You will take your time to get know, to know people. You will ascertain people before they get into your bed, heart and life. You will get to know their values, character and background before committing. You won't do business deals with people without making sure contracts are drawn up and signed. Remember Joel with Cindy and how fast he moved on her and got in? That happened to me also with the two narcissists in my life. Absolutely, it was very fast. Narcissists need to do that. They don't waste time with people they can't hook. They need a food supply quickly. Think of a predator in the wild. They don't tackle a robust bison. They take on a limping gazelle at the edge of a pack. Clean up your limp. Become a bison who was solid, emotionally self-sufficient, totally unafraid of anybody and robust enough to show up truthfully. If you've done the inner work, you will be in your body, totally connected to your inner cues and your gut messages. These are prompts from your higher self and the divine who are partnering with you always to grant you the truth. But if you are researching around out there, doing everything that you can to learn about narcissists and you haven't even started to self-partner and come home to yourself, are you going to listen? Or are you going to keep making excuses for other people, be ruled by your unhealed wounds, emotional emptiness and recklessness and hand your power away? Please know I'm not saying how it is to shame you. Rather, I'm telling you this as I needed to do with myself to wake you up to the truth and empower you, which I had to fully face myself. Who do you want to be? A robust bison or an injured gazelle? And are you willing to do whatever it takes to play your best offense, ga offense game? If so, put down your fruitless narcissistic research and instead fully dedicate yourself to healing yourself. Okay, robust bison or limping gazelle. Be really honest. Who are you right now and who do you want to become? Let me know in your comments below. All right, so let's do some bison training to defeat energy vampires by clicking the link at the top right of this video. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe so that you'll be notified as soon as each new one is released. And if you like this, click like. Also, please share with your communities so that we can help people awaken to these truths. So robust bisons, as always, I am greatly looking forward to answering your comments and your questions below. So until the next one, keep smiling, keep healing, and keep bisoning on and thriving. Lots of love. Bye-bye.